And then in the spring, of course, there's the saying about planting corn when the leaves are as big as a squirrel's ear, so you're, you're readily, you know, you're watching. I'm Dana Hoagland, and I live on 10 acres, and it's dominated by oak trees, and so the name of the farm is Wild Oaks Farm. And what do you grow? Uh, primarily apple trees for commercial end use. Um, yeah. Probably the largest one is the amount of and kinds of rocks in the soil and um, the texture itself. It's got some silt in it, a nice amount, and then fine sand, very little clay but about 20% gravel depending on where you go and so dry is the biggest issue. I monitor based on kind of time of the year when certain things are likely to be pupating or emerging that kind of thing and then some of the damage like from borers shows up and, and then, so that's kind of by, by the numbers, and then I specifically am out just checking different things like irrigation lines and, and uh, the mulch film, et cetera, and, and discover things on accident when I'm, even though I'm looking for something specific. So it's both, it's both kind of trial and error as well as intentional. It's uh, could have different, I suppose, looks, et, et cetera, but basically it's a wraparound system on the trunk that you apply a material to that either physically kills by an insect getting stuck in it or deters it from wanting to even try because it's too uh, you know, too uncomfortable to go through, and they know they'll they'll die. And so I have applied them to the trees. I try to go above grass line where grass is an issue, and then otherwise below the lowest branches. And the single biggest reason to apply them would, for my case, would be thatching ants. And some of the smaller ants are a problem also. Earwigs secondary to them, and then. As far as um, the next biggest problem would be boring beetles and they tend to fly from above as adults and they feed on the leaves and then they work their way down and then when it's time to lay eggs they usually go below the lowest branches and so I put the, the barrier usually a few inches below those lowest branches and then I'm protecting from things crawling up and then I'm, because uh, some things they basically, they commute, they'll also they'll come from the ground every night and, and then go back, you don't even see them. And so, and then the uh, beetles, anything else flying from above that's, that's going to do that. So 